It's about that time of day again. My name is Joseph. Wednesday evening, October 24th. Welcome back to your nightly newsletter. My job is to help new traders earn consistent profits using a simple and reliable trading strategy. And my plan this evening is to identify the most reliable trading opportunities setting up for tomorrow's trading session. And tonight, we're covering crude oil, S&P, NASDAQ, gold, and euro. Starting off this evening, crude oil is bearish and trying to run all the way back to yesterday's low. And my plan is to look for selling opportunities, and I got my eyes on the high of a channel before we get there tomorrow. The S&P is bearish, strong run lower, and I got a high of a hidden channel lined up with a beautiful resistance swing just begging to be sold tomorrow morning. NASDAQ is also bearish, and we get a perfect overshoot of a channel. So we're watching for that same overshoot, that pendulum swings back up higher, and we're looking for a sell with some buyer failures to a retest of the low tomorrow morning. Don't forget about gold. Gold is bullish and trying to make a run back to Tuesday's high. But I don't trust this move whatsoever, and I'm watching for the signal when buyers get in trouble for a short back into last week's range. If there's one chart you do not want to miss tonight, it is that gold chart because we're talking about the most important trading tools. I'll make you guys stay tuned for that, right, for the gold later on in the video tonight. And wrapping up tonight on the euro, the euro is bearish with a spike and range pattern. So the goal is to sell above that range high using the two try buyer failure pattern tomorrow morning. Boy, we had a great day today. What a day. We were hoping for some volatility today, and we definitely got it. Get some big plans for tomorrow. We get some big news tomorrow morning. We got some big moves on today's charts. And as always, I've got a rock solid plan for you guys. If you're planning on trading Thursday, you want you don't want to miss this video. Before we jump in though and put the plan together for Thursday's session, I want to remind you if you're watching me this evening on YouTube, you can find a detailed description of this entire trading strategy. It's written out right here on my blog at Sideways Markets. I'll leave all the links you need in the description of the video tonight. Also, if you have any questions about anything covered in tonight's video, please remember you can post them in the comment section below. And if you like what you see tonight, please help support this channel by subscribing and make sure when you do, you hit that bell icon so you get notified every time I post something new on YouTube. And don't forget, if your goal is to become a consistently profitable trader, you can get that transformation started by joining our mailing list right here on the homepage. All I need is your name and your email address to get that transformation started. Don't forget, if you want to download all the charts from tonight's video, they're available for download right below the video tonight. If you're on the blog, just look right below the video. You'll see a button there for the charts for tonight. If you're on the YouTube channel, it's linked up in the description. And don't forget, upper right-hand corner, if you have any questions about anything here tonight, don't forget to call the toll-free number right, or use that live support tool in the upper right-hand corner. All right, we got some we got no time to waste here tonight. Great day today, but as I always remind you guys, right? Great day today was great, but we got to wait for tomorrow. We got a big day tomorrow. Let's get ready for it. Tomorrow morning, all the news is coming at you here early, early, early tomorrow, 8:30 Eastern time. We got durable goods, international trade, and the jobless claims number tomorrow. This is big news. This is big news. Jobless claims, not so much, right? But definitely international trade for all your currencies, right? And gold, obviously. And, of course, durable goods, right, for the overall economy. We definitely expect to see things like oil and the E-minis affected by durable goods. So I don't think anybody's safe tomorrow morning around 8.30. We should see quite a bit of movement tomorrow early in the session. And with such big moves today on most markets, we are looking forward to another great session tomorrow now tonight we'll go over the entire plan here tonight we got crude oil s p nasdaq gold and euro just remember i'm going to go over all the stuff tonight and we're going to trade this stuff together tomorrow morning at eight o'clock eastern time we open up our trade and we can learn more about that right on our website all the links are below the video let's jump right in tonight here we got crude oil first up here tonight crude is yeah it's bearish with a strong run lower a hidden channel a trading range and a reversal line on the chart for tomorrow the bears have control after this collapse 
bounce off today's high. But this move lower, this move lower here that we see right now, this probably wasn't sellers. This was probably buyers getting out of their positions from earlier today. And I don't know that many professional sellers who want to sell this low on the chart. So the plan is to look for selling opportunities because the bears have the momentum at their back, but we want to get up off of this low and try to find some levels of resistance, right, to combine with those entry patterns that, by the way, right, we teach every day, right, in our in our trade room. So we're bearish. I want to sell up at resistance. Where can I find some resistance? We go up. We come back down. First things first, I always love channels. So I'm lining up those lows, bringing it up to those highs, and that is a great looking area of resistance to look for a sell, right? That level of resistance is excellent for a sell. We can also see some key levels of resistance. I call these reversal lines. There's a little tiny, tiny pullback right there. That makes for a level there at 75. I've got 75, 89, and then of course we got that reversal line there at 94. So really you combine this, you combine this battle zone, this resistance area overhead with this trend line and all of a sudden you've got a recipe right for sellers success as we go back down in now if we can get that short we know where we're trying to go here we're trying to go back down to retest that low at 74 that's the ultimate goal here for those bears I've got that measured move here targeted one two, three. So that'll be the easy target, right? But I would imagine with this much momentum going lower here, we're going to try to find our way back down to that 74 tomorrow. But I'm definitely watching that measured move and that will all depend on where right how far we pull back so let's plan this out here a little bit we got the measured move waiting for us down bottom let's move that out of the way here for a second we'll get that out of the way and let's dig in here and make sure we have a good plan here for tomorrow. Now, this is really setting up nicely here because you'll notice that moving average is just now coming down here. So something tells me if we can get back up to the high of that channel, get above that moving average, what's going to happen? There are going to be buyers down here who are thinking now this market is bullish just below that range, right? So those buyers are likely going to try to buy that pullback. And hey, they might be successful, but right now the momentum is definitely not on their side and so what I'm gonna do is is I'm gonna let those buyers try once above the moving average I'm gonna let them try a second time above that moving average and unless we see this thing explode going higher here I'm gonna be looking for a combination setup which we call a two try failure into a hidden channel pullback once we get that drop down I'll find that new low Right, mark up that new channel and look for that sell off the high of that channel. So kind of kind of follow along here for a second, right? As I back this thing out here, once these buyers now try to buy as it comes off of that off of that moving average, now we know exactly where the buyers are getting into trouble. Now we know where the pain starts. Once price gets below that low, now we know buyers. Uh, I would imagine if I was a buyer, I'd be getting the heck out of that position. And what is what happens? How do you, how do you get out of a long you become a seller and so when we combine a level of resistance in a bear market and we can time our entries with buyer failures now it's a whole flood of sell orders we got buyers now become sellers sellers are selling right and we already have that momentum to drag this market back down again now typically this will jump right typically this will jump lower here we don't want to chase after it we'll look for that two try failure pattern right selling into those stops but that's it now we're gonna wait patiently here wait for the pullback look for that hidden channel pullback and we're looking for that roll back right back down again so that combination right that two try failure into that hidden channel pullback if you want to learn more about this little combination pattern not to mention I've got literally hundreds of examples of real patterns right directly from these charts if you want to learn more about this little combination it's a beautiful beautiful thing in a trending market learn more about it grab our free trading course in the upper right hand corner I want to do a much deeper dive with you on this teach you the rules how to use it properly show you hundreds of examples I mean wait wait till you log into my free class you'll see there are hundreds of hours of examples of these patterns all for absolutely free you can grab that free course in the upper right hand corner right or you can 
find the, find the links in the description of the YouTube video or right below the video on the blog. There's a big red button there for the free trading course. Now, what if price keeps going lower, right? What if price keeps going lower? Uh, it's going to be one of two things if price keeps going lower. One, it may come down as what we call a spike in channel. If we start seeing a small channel here, Okay, small channel here. Now we know, mark up those highs. We want to get up, and now we'll look for a trap into a two-try failure back down again, right? That becomes a trap up above that high into a two-try failure, right? Trap patterns are also great, especially when we see a spike in channel. So if it keeps going lower in a channel, right? You know, not a not a not a wide channel, right? It's not doing this, but it you know kind of keeps grinding lower here. If it keeps grinding lower, grab that low, grab that high, find those swings. And what you want to remember is if this thing keeps going lower, what hasn't it done yet? It hasn't given the sellers a chance to sell high yet. So they're waiting. And that's the reason why we always expect to see a deep pullback when we get a spike in channel pattern. Spike in channel patterns are my top five chart patterns that every new trader, you owe it to yourself to learn this pattern. Uh, the, 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 the psychology of this pattern says we haven't pulled back yet. We haven't given the sellers a chance to sell yet. So once it does pop up, everybody will come in and throw the kitchen sink at it and send this price back down. That's the second scenario. Third scenario would be we keep going lower and we end up getting stuck down here in a trading range. Now, we're going to see this later on on the euro. Euro had a big run down here today. If we end the day on a range like this, what do we do? We take the size of that range, copy and paste it up, that creates resistance, copy and paste it down, that creates support. Does that make sense, right? Take the size of that range, size of that range, copy and paste up, size of that range, copy and paste down, right? That creates resistance, that creates support. Now, we don't really care so much about support, right? What we really care about is that level of resistance up here, because again, we're bearish. So if that's the case now, we end up going sideways. How do you know we're sideways? Double bottoms, moving average will go flat. It'll feel sideways, right? Maybe it's a triangle. It'll be going sideways, right, as we go. Bear bias into a trading range. What's the plan? Two try, failure pattern, right? One try, two try, failure. Let those buyers try once, let them try twice, and then sell into their failure. Very, very simple. Keep your eye on that range expansion. Hopefully, it lines up as perfect as it looks right now. I, I, we'll see, right? We'll see. Uh, but hopefully, we'll get that range expansion included. That range expansion is such an important part, right, of a trading range. And as you can see, it's simple, right? Just take the range and just copy and paste it up. It's easy stuff. You don't need some complicated software for it. You know, you just need to know how to use your charts. That's one of the most common misconceptions uh, for new traders. When I was a new trader, I mean, how many tens of thousands of dollars did I waste on fancy software when all I needed was some trend lines, and a moving average. They don't tell you that, right, when they're trying to sell you that $10,000 software package. I know, I know. I did it too. I did it too. I bought all the fancy robots. I bought all the fancy software. And, and guess what they do for me now? Yeah, they're just a reminder, right, of the of the many mistakes I made early in my career. It wasn't my fault back then. It's not your fault now. Now you know, right? You know better. You do better. And, you know, we're going to use this strategy, right, without any need for those complicated uh, software or expensive software tools that are supposed to turn your computer into an ATM machine while you hit the beach and drink Mai Tais, right? Okay, bottom line is we're bearish, but how do we turn bullish? What does a bull market look like? A bull market requires what? A one, two, three, right? Reversal. I, I got an email today from a guy who had like who had like 10 exclamation points after the reversal. It was great. I love to hear from you guys. It's always so great to hear you guys doing well out there with this strategy. Um, and I love it when you post comments about it too. Don't be afraid to poke fun of my corny jokes while you're at it. Uh, one, two, three reversal. What does that mean? First, strong move up. We've got to get a strong move up to kind of set the table, right? Set the table. Anytime we see a strong move in one direction, we typically see another leg. So that will be number one, move up. Two, pull back to the moving average. Three, be that punch. This is the punch that you need to see. It's got to be real strong, right? That's why I said there's an exclamation at the end, right? How do you reverse the trend? A one, two, three reversal, right? That punch at the end because that punch at the end 
Those are not buyers. Those are sellers getting the heck out of town, right, while this thing runs them out. Now, what do we do at that point? Good question. Do we buy here now? No, no, no. We're, 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 we're buying too high at that point. We always have a plan. We always have a plan. The plan is if it does give us that one, two, three reversal, we mark up this high, mark up these highs, mark up that low. That creates that spike in channel, that hidden channel. And now we know we're looking to buy that pullback. Saw a great example of that today on the oil charts, didn't we? So looking at that now as a buy, the target for the bulls are trying to go back up and retest that 72. We'll look for that buy at the low of that hidden channel. But again, be very careful. We can easily jump up. We can easily look like the market's going to reverse. But guess what? We see these potential reversals all the time. And my bread and butter has always been selling right into those reversal failures. So very, very good plan here for tomorrow. Now it's all about waiting patiently to see if if we can get that price up off this low and don't forget I've covered a lot here you can learn a lot more about those patterns I've talked about all those reversals find that information icon in the upper right hand corner join the free trading course grab the links in the description or below the video on the blog let's keep going how about some S&P here tonight S&P is bearish with a strong move lower a, a bear flag and a pair of hidden channels on the chart tonight. The strong move lower clearly gives the bears momentum, right? You can easily see that strong move lower. In fact, you'll notice I had to go to an 8,000 tick chart just to be able to get my arms around how much volume we saw today. You might be wondering, you know, why do I use different chart time frames on these slower time frame charts? My main objective is just to understand what the general structure is. I get this question quite a bit. Why, why some days are you on a 5,000 tick chart and on other days you're on an 8,000 or a 9,000 tick chart on the same market? And the answer is if I was to use a 5,000 tick chart, right, I'd have to squeeze it like that, right? And it'd be very difficult to analyze that chart. So what I'd like to do is, and this may be a little bit unorthodox, I know they don't really teach this in books, but welcome to my world, right? I'm, I'm almost 100% self-taught. I've learned from making mistakes. And this is one of the many, many ways that I get a kind of a, again, get my arms around the structure. It's just easier to do it that way. And then I'll use a faster time frame to go actually find the entry patterns, which we'll do in our trade room. And and again, that's another that's a, that's another example of why you might want to take that free trading course I mentioned earlier, because you'll see more about the actual time frames that we use to find the entries on these at these areas of support and resistance. Okay, I don't want to get too crazy on this. The strong move lower clearly gives the bears the momentum they need to confidently sell into resistance levels overhead, and the most likely resistance levels to watch right now are going to be these two hidden channels i've got i've got two channels on here we'll talk about it in a second and i've got right a prior set of swings up here right around 94 84 so right around 26 90. so the main thing right now is we know we're bearish we want to sell at resistance here's the first thing first things first let's get let's peel these off here a little bit let's get that out of here for now that measured move is to be determined we'll talk about that in a second let's get Okay, let's do this one first. Let's get this one out of the way. Let's peel off some of these layers here. Now, we all know, we it's, it's easy to see here as we go lower, there's this resistance trend line coming down. In fact, you could say that that's the only thing that we really know for sure, right? You really could say that. That's the only thing that we really know for sure right now is there is a resistance trend line coming down overhead. So that is a key level of resistance, right? But let's be honest, that's a huge pullback. With this much momentum going lower, I mean, I hope we get it, but I just, I'm not going to hold my breath. Let's put it that way. Because with that much momentum going lower, we'll be lucky. We'll be lucky if we can pull back to this swing. Right, because I think that I think the gig is up. It feels like people are now selling into these bounces, and so I just I wouldn't be surprised if we have a hard time getting all the way back to that trend line. Do, do I hope so? Absolutely. I hope we get all the way up there, and I hope we get a nice big one try, two try failure right into hidden channel pullback all the way back down. But again, I wouldn't hold your breath, right? I wouldn't hold your breath on that. What is a lot more kind of realistic is if we take this major low 
connect to that low, and this is kind of one of those little tricks we do in the trade room, that creates this hidden channel now. Now that looks a whole lot more reasonable, right? So now I've got that layered on, right? And you're going to see how we kind of put the layers back together now. And now we've got that trend line coming down. So this area is definitely on our radar here tomorrow. Will we get the top trend line? We'll wait and see. I don't know. Probably not, but who knows, man? I'm, I'm, I'm more, the interesting part about being a trader is, is that when I'm doing my analysis every day, honestly, you're wrong more than you're right when it comes to the analysis portion of it, right? I'm kind of guessing what I think is going to happen next. Oh, that holds, that didn't hold, right? I mean, you know, they, they always say being a trader means being comfortable with being uncomfortable. And that really is what it means. You're going to be, you're going to have ideas like this. You're going to be wrong a lot. But the best part is, is all it takes, you know, like the baseball game last night, all it takes is one swing to hit a home run. You know, you they, they give you three strikes. You're It's okay if you're not hitting 100%. You don't need to be. So again, we'll put these levels on. We'll see what we get for tomorrow. What I'm going to do is, is try to combine right one of these levels of resistance with an entry pattern. So I'm not just going to sell that trend line, right? We're going to wait for it to go up, wait for it to go up. We'll find that failure and we'll look for that, right? We'll look for that sell back down in. So that is a key component for tomorrow. Then as we go lower here, we've got these prior swings. These prior swings are definitely on my radar. Now, why are why are these so important? Well. A long time ago, I had a I had a really great opportunity to sit down with uh, uh, with a couple ex Goldman bankers, to be honest with you. And uh, as as disappointed as I was, I'll be very very honest. Everyone thinks, oh Goldman, whatever. These guys were basically monkeys in a suit. They they really weren't the caliber that I thought that they were. In fact, it was a great meeting. Uh, and I looked at their charts they were using, and of course, what I saw was was I saw limit orders just sitting right above all of these prior swings, right? And I said, so what's the, what's the plan, right? And this was kind of the beginning of the end for me. I just, I just met these guys. Um, it was an introduction from a friend of a friend of a friend. And uh, I was excited. I was expecting to see something intelligent, something very, very smart. And I go in, I'm like, all you're doing is just selling above those swings. So he goes, well, yeah, we get, we get so much capital, right? Uh, we want the market to go down. We just sell it. And I say, well, well, okay. So, so that's, that's all, that's all you do. And they're like, yeah, and I'll put the pairs, right? We'll play the pairs and we'll, we'll, we'll take the spreads in two. And so that really opened my eyes as far as what this is many years ago. Open my eyes, first of all, right? Do not assume that these, you know, these these investment bankers are better than you or smarter than you. Most of them were just given a, an opportunity that they were able to take advantage of, right? My dad didn't my, my dad didn't introduce me right to the Goldman banking team, right? Sorry, my granddad didn't work at Chase Manhattan, right? If you're in the same shoes, don't let it get to you, right? You shouldn't need to live on Wall Street. You shouldn't need to have your grandfather's name on the door you shouldn't need right to have all these to have all of these uh, advantages and that's really what I found what I found was these are people just like you and I they just had a bunch more zeros right in their trade accounts of other people's money by the way not not their own money right they make good money but not right not what we can make as individual traders the bottom line is this is where I learned when a strong trend is in play right? You're going to have a lot of traders up here. And what they'll do is they'll sell 100 here, right? They'll sell 200 here, right? They'll sell 300 here. They're going to basically scale into that move as it goes, right? They're going to scale in. If they don't get to sell here, it'll go up a little bit higher. They'll sell some more and it will drop there, right? That's, that, that's, that's a strategy you can use if you've got other people's money. No concerns about margin call, right? Because your broker sees you doing that. He's, he or she's going to call you and say, hello, are you aware of the dangers of this? Because if this thing rips higher here, we're going to call you, right, for a margin call, and you're going to need more than you have in your account. So the bottom line is, when I see that strong move down, right, I know there are lots of those 
I'll keep my opinions to myself on this, right? But I know there are lots of those big fish out there who are waiting up here, right, to be selling off of those highs, right? And those big fish, right, they're just like us, right? They just have a fancy business card and some extra connections, right, that many of us didn't have. But I'll tell you right now, right, you don't need to work on Wall Street to get an edge over your competition. You just need to pay attention, use market psychology, use reliable technical levels, right, and use solid entry patterns. So knowing that, I've got my eyes on these, right, on these prior swings. With that said, I think the one big variable right now is this possible flag, as you can see, kind of coming up here. We're going to watch that closely here because if it does continue to hold that trend line, we're basically looking now for a move up and then use that trend line right as we go. So those are the main components, channel high, swings, and this rising support trend line. I want to get up so I can sell it back down. And when I do that, let's kind of zoom in here real quick. Now that you can know the big picture here, as we go higher here, right? And again, what I'm watching for now is I'm going to watch and see how this stuff holds. If it looks like we keep developing this trend line higher, I'm going to have to pay attention to it. And basically, we want to go up into that channel underneath, right? And use, right? And use that underbelly. This will be, right? This will be that, one try, two try, failure pattern. We just talked about on the crude, right? One try, two try. Let those buyers try. Let them jump, right? Let those buyers try to hold that pullback. We'll look now for that failure, that failure into strength. Let, them, let, let that thing collapse lower. Don't chase after it, though. And then, of course, we can get into that combo, right, for that bear, right, for that bear channel, that hidden, what we call a hidden channel pullback pattern. Now, again, if we see this thing starting to hold here, right, if that, if that trend line here, if we're kind of stair-stepping our way up as we go, now it's one try, it's two try, and it's looking to get in below that trend line, right? That'll be your one try, that'll be your two try, then we can look for that sell going back down. And again, I'd like to see it go up once, twice i love to sell into those stops and then find that new channel right and sell off that channel on the way lower right on the way lower so that's that that's the pullback pattern now what if we collapse back down again right what if we collapse if we collapse back down again and we bounce off that low if we see a double bottom ish right you know close to double bottom we bounce off it that becomes a range what do we do with the range you got it we measure the size of the range right create resistance once we have that resistance level up here now, now we go one try, two try, and we try to use that one try, two try failure pattern to sell back down in, right? Makes sense there? Okay, so we got that possible range here tomorrow. Uh, what else might happen tomorrow? Possible spike in channel. If we roll lower there, right, that becomes your channel. Mark up those swings, like we talked about on the, on the, on the oil, right, and then up trap. Two try failure, back down. I love trap patterns, right? Trap, two try failure, back down. Don't forget that free trading course I keep talking about, which is below the video on the blog, in the description on the YouTube channel, right? Or up in the upper right-hand corner in that information icon. We go over lots of trap patterns. One of my favorite, favorite trap patterns is that combination, right? That combination pattern where we got that channel into that trap. These are always some of the most reliable trades, right? A trap channel combination. And you can see we have this coming potentially here on the S&P right now with that channel coming down, right? That swing there. So trap to try failure back down. That's the good stuff. If we can go watch out for that trading range. It was a big, big bear day. Oftentimes we go that far, right? In one day, it goes sideways. If it does, Focus on one try, two try, right? Let those buyers try once, pull back, try twice, and then back down we go. One try, two try, back down in. If it rolls lower, find that new channel, and we're still looking to sell up above those highs. How do we turn bullish? Uh, a small miracle, uh, the divine in intervention, I think, at this point, right? It feels like anything that pops higher here right now is going to be sold. So you've really got to be careful, right? You really got to, you really got to be careful here right now. 
uh, the uh, the bull god's got to come down here right now and save this party here because, like I said earlier, it definitely feels like sentiment has changed here. But what we need is we need to see it run, right? A big, strong, short covering rally. Like this thing has to be like, whoa, that's a big run, right? This needs to be one of those lean in moves where you lean on your computer and you go, oh, look at that sucker, right? So let it run. It's got to really, really run, okay? Once it runs, now we know buyers are going to be tempted to buy that pullback. Now, remember, we know better than buying that pullback, right? We talked about that last night, that balance between percentage and profits, right? This is not a reliable buy yet, so I will be looking for that failure going back down. But if, let's just let's just say they are successful at blasting higher, one, two, three, reversal, right? Exclamation at the end, then we'll mark up that high, that high, find the channel, right? And now we look for what is usually going to be a to try failure below the moving average at the low of that channel for those bulls, right? It's a two try seller as bears try to force it back down. Like I said, that's going to take some a small miracle tomorrow just because of the overall bearishness right now. I mean, even if we run here, I mean, what's what's the halfway point, right? I mean, right up there. So, I mean, it's, it's still going to be tough to really get these buyers on board here right now, especially what have to happen, right? What happened today? Let's keep going here, though. A lot more to cover here tonight. And again, uh, uh, if you want a deeper dive into any of these patterns I'm talking about, just grab that link in the description, right, and grab that free trading course. How about some NASDAQ? NASDAQ is bearish with a strong run lower, a bear channel, and a measured move to work with tonight. The bears have the momentum with this colossal collapse lower here. They were saying, they were saying something like this is the biggest, biggest down day the NASDAQ had since 2011, something like that. I'm like, this little thing? This little, this, this is, this is the what, this is what everyone's talking about right now. <laughs> Trust me, guys and gals, once we turn, once we turn really bearish, right, Tim, we've been on a 10-year bull run, okay? Wait till this thing really gets cooking here right now. This is going to be, this is going to be a, a, an appetizer for those bears, right? They're going to be sinking their teeth into all those, into all those bulls. The bottom line, though, is don't let the news media scare you on this. This is a tame, this is a tame little one. The bears definitely have momentum right now. There is a collapse lower. That tells us to wait for price to rotate higher for selling opportunities off of resistance levels. Knowing this, I've got my eyes on the high of this channel. This channel was way too well behaved. You know what I mean? It's like it's like you come home from the party, right? The kid's sitting there with his teeth brushed, books are red, tucked into bed, and you're going, what the hell happened here, right? Something is wrong. You are not my child, right? I, I, was, <laughs> I was hanging out. I don't have any kids yet, but I was hanging out with my nephews a few weeks ago. I got a couple of, uh, you know, toddler age, little, little terrors, right? Little, little terrors with, with, with blue eyes and freckles and uh, uh, amazing, amazing kids. But I'll, but, but I'll tell you, man, when, when, the, when the parents go away, right, boy, oh boy, do they, do they play. The bottom line, though, is this, is this channel is way too well behaved right now. It's almost spooky how this much movement still stayed within it and you can tell you put your finger on that midline and look at that midline just that's the lifeline of that channel and you can see right off that high you know usually when you see a market like you know like collapse like this look at the S&P right the S&P didn't hold any channels right I mean if that was your channel earlier this thing just gah right it just collapse so that's usually what happens this channel really held in nicely so we're going to use that channel for tomorrow I've got that overshoot Right, I've got that overshoot off of that low. I'm watching that overshoot off of that high. So channel's a big, big clue. I'd like to sell off the high of that, right? I want to sell off the high of that channel. But that little overshoot. Now, remember when I talked about this? Did we talk about it last night? I think it was last night. Put the crosshair on. I like to keep my crosshair uh, off. Um, I've got my little hotkeys on here in NinjaTrader. Um, a good little trick is hotkey control P for the pointer, hotkey control X for the crosshair. Maybe it's just me. I also count the uh, the carpet fibers in my house every weekend to make sure they're all still there. I'm a little bit over. I'm a little bit OCD with this stuff. I've been doing this for a long time, but I like to keep the uh, right the uh, the crosshair closed. Let's put it back on control X. I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line. Right off, and I teach all this stuff by the way in the intermediate classes. I'm going to draw a line off the low of this to that low right there. Right, that's where I get the measurement tool. Then take that crosshair, right, put it up top now, 
And that's where now we take the high of that channel now, right, and then put it up. That creates that that uh, uh, that overshoot level. Now remember, as this price develops here, this will keep coming, right? It'll keep coming down. It'll keep coming down, right? So let's just say, for example, that this thing kind of, you know, farts around here for a while and then goes up, right? It'll be right there. Does that make sense? Right? So that will be the level. So right now, all I can really do is, no, I don't really count the carpet fibers. I was just kidding around with you on that one. I'm not that bad. My wife, my wife might though. I should probably, probably, probably should watch, watch her sometimes when she's not looking. She might be counting those carpet fibers. If you know Megan, you know what I'm talking about. If you're listening out there, Meg, I love you, darling. Let's see. So we've got this, right? We've got this overshoot. We're looking for the overshoot right back up. Now that overshoot, where does that put us? It puts us just above that prior swing, right? Remember those, remember those brainiac, right? Those, those highly intelligent uh, Goldman traders somewhat earlier, right? We know there are probably going to be some sell orders, right, hanging out above those highs. So I really like this area here. I really like this area here, right? That that overshoot into overshoot. That's a level of resistance. But again, it's a dynamic, right? It's a dynamic level of resistance. So I'm watching the overshoot. I'm watching the top of that channel. I'm watching these prior swings. I got this gorgeous reversal line up there at 83. I doubt we get there, but I hope we do. That'd be really nice for a sell back down. And then again, much like on the much like on the S&P, I think a lot of this has to do with, you know, do we end up seeing this thing hold as a support trend line? If that's the case, if it stair steps up, one try, two try, get below that trend line, let those buyers try once, let them try twice, and then we'll sell that sucker right back down again, right? Turns into that, turns into that buyer failure, mark up that low, mark up that channel, and then we can look for that sell right off of that channel. That ends up being a, ends up being a breakout pullback a two try failure, right? And a hidden channel pullback on the way down. So we're gonna watch that trend line as we go higher. We know where the area we're looking for up here is. Now all we need to do is, is get up there, right? We go up, wanna get a nice strong push up. That'll count as one, pull back, two, hold that trend line or at least clear below the trend line. The moving average, of course, at that point will be over here, right? We'll have it come back down. That's our sell right there, right? And then, of course, we've got our new hidden channel, and we can sell off of that channel as we come back down. It's also important, too, if we, right, if we come back down to that low, if we don't get that bounce back up to the high of that channel, watch out for this to bounce off of that low. That creates a trading range. What do we do? Take that range, right, copy and paste it up copy and paste it down. Bottom line is once we see a trading range, we're trying to go up one try, two try, right? And then back down again. They don't need to be big two tries. They just need to show proof that we've got those buyers trying to break out once, trying to break out twice. And then once we see what we call separation and significance, which you'll learn more about the two try rule in our intermediate classes. It's also covered in extensive detail as part of our free trading class. Once we see that separation and significance, then we'll look for that sell going back down to retest that low. But I'll tell you, sometimes they're very small like that, right? That, believe it or not, is a one try two try. It's very, very small. It doesn't need, doesn't need to be huge, right? They come in all shapes and sizes, right? So you can look for those buyers. Just want to see the buyers try twice, consciously try twice above that range, and we can sell it back down. What if we turn lower and we don't double bottom? Then what? Yeah, then it becomes a channel, right? Find that new channel, mark up those highs, right? And we'll just sell off of those highs, right? So if it does keep going lower here, just keep on focus. Remember, if it keeps going lower, there are going to be lots of sellers waiting patiently up there to sell with you. Just stay patient and wait for that sucker to come back up so we can sell it back down again. How do we turn bullish? How do we turn bullish? A miracle, right? A miracle. You're going to need a lot of, yeah, a, a small miracle for this one. Strong move up. It's got to go at least up into that overshoot for me to take it seriously. Then we want to see them 
pull back to the moving average and explode off of that moving average. This is where it's all about personality. It's all about personality at that point. Got to see the jump up. We'll find that swing, find that high of the channel, mark up that low, and we'll look for the buy right as we pull back, right? So that's the plan. Again, if we get it, but I'm telling you, don't hold your breath on this. We've got to see a real strong move on that on that second try going higher, right? This leg right here needs to look like, oh my goodness, I've never seen anything stronger in my entire It's going to be really strong. It's going to feel like those bears have completely walked away, and then we can go looking for that buy off the low of that channel. Great, great overshoot, overshoot opportunity here. Overshoots oftentimes confuse people, and that means great opportunities here for us. All right. Hope you took your vitamin E here today because gold is bullish with a trading range, a pendulum swing, and a measured move on the chart this not, uh, tonight. The big clue on this chart begins with yesterday's big run higher. Yeah, I know. Yesterday. Yeah, that, that, that yesterday. That big run higher, which we expected, as you remember from last night's newsletter, we expected this to trap low, right? Remember that from last night? I was looking for that trap off the high. Well, as you can see, you probably noticed, we didn't get it. And the market pretty much just sat there and sat there and sat there and then jammed lower and then came back up. Now, at this point, right, we didn't get the collapse, right, we were looking for. And that tells me now that buyers are likely gearing up to try to retest this high up here. Right, that high up there at, at 43. So my job is to wait for them to show signs of attempting it, then show signs of failure, and we'll look to sell this thing right back down into that range. The key now is anticipating the buyers, right? I mentioned earlier, you need to eat your vitamin D or, or take your vitamin E today, right? And that means E for empathy, right? Our secret weapon as professional traders, anticipating the buyers, putting yourself, right, in the shoes of the bulls, right? If you need to, go consult with Google, right? And I'm sure Google can tell you a lot of things. One of the things is, right, the, the definition definition right of empathy so where would they be looking to buy as the price runs higher if it were me right if I was a buyer I'd be waiting here as we go higher I'd be waiting for a trap low because that high is coming up right coming up fast here I wouldn't want to buy the pullback I would wait for a trap right I'd wait for a trap low that's what I would do. If I was a buyer, I'd be looking for a trap low up here because anytime you find yourself with limited room left before you reach the objective, the objective is 43, right? Think about it. Big move up. What happens anytime we see a big move in one direction? What do we expect? We expect the buyers to try twice. Apparently, right, that's your second try right there. Apparently, that's your one, that's your two. It didn't look like it, but hey, like I said, get used to being wrong. It comes with the territory. It's the, it's the way it goes. The good news is you only got to be right once in a while, right, to make more money than people dream about. So the bottom line is, is that we got that big strong move up. Apparently this is one and this is two. So I know they're trying to retest that high, right? I know where they want to get right now. I can see we've got a trading range here, right? And that trading range has a pendulum swing, right? Balance in the middle, swings down swings up so we're expecting now as those bears failed that pendulum now to swing back that momentum to swing back in the opposite direction as the sellers get the heck out of their position so we know that momentum is just a little bit more bullish right than bearish so the plan is to look for buyers to get long with traps right and then look for that trap to fail to sell this thing back down again and again what i've been looking for was a buyer i want to see it go up I want to see a trap, right, and then look to sell this thing once that trap fails. So how would that look, right? How would that look? Well, at its simplest, at, at the core of this, by knowing where we're trying to go, we now know we got to get it somewhere up here. And I've got that pendulum swing down, pendulum swing up. That gives me resistance at 40.7. I've got that trading range. Remember, copy and paste it down, copy and paste it up, right? Okay, I've also got that measured move, one leg, two leg. So that creates this sell zone, right? That battle zone. 
So now we have the battle zone. The problem is momentum isn't bearish yet. Momentum is still bullish right now. So this is why I always say you got to be careful when momentum is bullish and you're trying to sell, right? So what we'll do is, is we're going to go up and then at its core, we're going to let these buyers try twice to get back to that 43. And once we pull back, we'll look for that second try. Right now, that second try, I hope we get this tomorrow, get that lower low. Buyers always want to buy low. So when we're looking for a nice sell in a bull market, I've got to wait for those buyers to try their second time at that lower price. Because I know the buyers who are the buyers who either tried or didn't try to buy that, to buy that first time, they're, gonna, they're not going to buy it again right there. They're going to wait for a lower price, and they're going to do it here. So if I can get... Right. If I can, again, put myself in the shoes of the buyers, this is just what I would do tomorrow. If I was going to be a buyer tomorrow, I'd be looking to buy that, that trap low. I wouldn't trust the first one because we're just right into the highs here. And whenever you're running low on open space before you get to your target, you always want to think about trap patterns. I talk more about that in the beginner classes. Right, You can learn more on our website. But the bottom line is if I was a buyer, I'd be buying that trap low, which means once we see this thing start to fail, oh, baby, right? That's where now we start attacking, right? Throw the kitchen sink at it and just kiss it goodbye because it will likely drop like a rock. So as we go higher here, up, pull back, one try, trap low. That becomes two tries for the bulls. Now everybody who's trying to buy, whether they're aggressive or they're conservative, they're all roped into this thing. And once it fails, now we know, look out below and we can sell it back down again, right? Now, what's another scenario? Another scenario would be, what if we go up one try, two try, and we collapse back down? That may that might happen, right? Because then after all, we know the market's a range, right? So we might see this collapse back down. If that's the case here, mark that level, mark that. You got it, right? Yeah, hidden channel pullback. I want to get up into those levels of resistance and sell that. So if we do see enough momentum here on the way down, okay, then we can sell that pullback. Um, it's going to be all what happens. I don't know what's going to happen, right? Maybe we get a trap. If I get that trap set up, beautiful opportunity for a two-try trap failure. Failure. Say that two times fast, right? Or do we collapse back down? We look for that hidden channel, right? As we as we go lower. Now, if we can go back and retest this high, this is very very important. If we go back and retest this high, time out, time out. Wait for it because now the bulls have completely redeemed themselves, right? They really have. If we can retest those highs. We have no right to be selling this market anymore. They're either going to fail, right, and collapse off the high. And if that's the case, then we can go looking for, right, that sell. If they collapse off the high, we can then look for that sell, right? But be very careful, though, because if they run through this high now, we now have that big measured move up there at 48 and a half. If they push through this high right now, really push through it, right, new channel, Mark up that new channel. You got it. Find that new channel. Buy that pullback, right? Usually, that'll be a pretty easy pullback if we can break through the highs on strength. But again, be very careful up there until you see that nice, strong punch through that high. In fact, probably better off to draw it like this, right? Up and blast higher. Really blast higher. Find that new channel, right? And then buy the pullback. Right? There should be no question in your mind when they push those highs where they want to go. Okay, What you don't want to do is, is try to buy this pullback. No, 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 no. Right? That's, not, that's not a very reliable plan because now you're already at the objective. Right? It's like selling down here. You're selling way too low. Up here, you're buying way too high. Right? Not, not, my, not, not my cup of tea. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to drink that. Okay, so it's either going to go through it or we collapse back down. And again, we'll find that new channel and we'll sell back down from there. All right, guys, so lots of little things to look for tomorrow. What I hope we get is, I hope we get that one try, two try, trap, failure, back down, or one try, two try, run, right, back down we go from there. Excellent, excellent chart there on the gold. Again, make sure you take your vitamin E, right? What's the most important skill for a trader? Empathy, empathy. My ability to anticipate what other traders are going to be doing. Right? We know what the momentum is. I'm going to anticipate those buyers going against that momentum, and I can sell into their failure. Right, That vitamin E strategy. 
Unfortunately, you can't buy that on Amazon Prime, can you? How about some Euro right now? Euro is definitely bearish with a trading range, measured move, reversal line, and hidden channel to work with tomorrow morning. The bears have control, so the goal is to sell using entry patterns in combination with resistance levels overhead. And I've definitely got my eye on that 14,900 reversal line. That reversal line is key, right? I've got my low to low, finding that new channel. In fact, yeah, yeah, low to low, right? Find that new channel. That's a level of resistance I want to use here for tomorrow. And then we have a double bottom, like I mentioned earlier, it doesn't need to be exactly a double bottom. It just needs to look close enough. If it, if it if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck and waddles like a duck and probably smells like a duck too. They're not very sanitary creatures, by the way. right? It's probably going to act like a duck. And so we can tell this is definitely acting right like a range, looking like a range. It'll probably act like a range. So we have that trading range now. You know what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to copy it down. There's support. Copy it up. There's resistance. We're bearish. I'm looking for resistance levels. Now we're talking. 14.9 to 14.8, this area here, prior swings, right? My boy, is that Goldman, right? Getting ready to sell that. <laughs> and then, of course, they, they, they were not very smart people. I will, tell, I will tell you that much. It was kind of like one of those... It was it was it was like seeing a movie that you couldn't wait for and you're like that's it that's that's all it is what a what a disappointment a very big eye opener the bottom line is we got resistance overhead I want to be a seller we're bearish right now it's a range so we don't want to go just selling right when away for that two try rule one try two try sell it back down what will happen is is that we'll get that strong move up it'll look very convincing you know and again you can see an example like this right one try pull back two try separation significance right and back down again that first try going higher will look very convincing that moving average will come up right those buyers will try to buy it again but this is where it runs out of gas, right? We need those buyers to jump off of that, right? They're not jumping, man. If they're not jumping, we are selling back down into that trading range. Now, there is possibility here this market may not be a range. So if it does keep on rolling lower here, right, again, sellers will never have a chance to sell high. So in that case, we want to make sure we sell, right, again, find those swings there, right? Spike in channel patterns are notorious for deep corrections. Trap into two try failure. Back down we go and sell it back down again. Trap high into two try failure and sell it up at resistance. When the market's bearish, we wait for areas of resistance to be tested so we can incorporate those with our entry patterns. To learn more about traps, two try failures, hidden channel pullbacks, everything in between, make sure you register for that free trading course. It's below the video on the blog at Sideways Markets. If you're on YouTube, it's linked up in the description or grab that information icon in the upper right hand corner. All right, guys. Wrapping things up here, wrapping things up here. What was that most important skill? Empathy, right? Empathy. Put yourself in the shoes of the other side of the market. Go with the momentum and try to think, if I was the opposite side of this market right now, where would I be getting in? Where would I be getting out? And wherever they're getting out is probably where you should be getting in if you're going with the trend, right? Going with that momentum. More to come tomorrow. Don't forget, 8 o'clock Eastern time. I'm going to see you there with me, right? Every morning we kick we, we, we kick butt together every day with our trade with our traders in the trade room. If you want more information, learn more about our beginner, intermediate, advanced classes on our website. Join the free trial for a free pass to attend our trade room. We've got live support anytime you need help. And don't forget to call that toll-free number at any step of the way if you need any assistance along the way. Who's winning tonight? Game two? Game two, boy, what a game last night. What a game last night. I'm sitting there. It was completely information overload. I'm like, Red Sox, Dodgers. I love both these teams. They were both. What a great. What a, I got to admit, though, the Dodgers held their own last night. I was so proud of them. Cold weather in, in Fenway, right? You can barely see what you're doing in Fenway Park. What a great game it was last night. Uh, I'm, I got I got to lean towards the Red Sox, but I'll tell you right now, I hope this game goes six seven six seven games because man oh man, we get some great baseball being played. There's only one October, as as they say, right? Hope you guys had a great day out there. We'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Enjoy the game tonight. Be well out there. Be nice to each other, will you? And be here next time. Adios, amigos. Bye bye for now.